Hi everyone, I'm Brandi Wagstaff. I'm an adjunct professor of law with George Mason University Law School. I'm also an attorney advisor and 23 year veteran with the federal government. In my capacity as a law professor, I teach appellate writing, appellate advocacy, legislative regulatory drafting, disability law, and civil rights prosecutions. I'm here today to talk to you in my capacity as a disability law professor. Today, we're going to talk about ways in which you can help represent and advocate for your disabled clients, especially those who have experienced employment discrimination on the basis of disability. Specifically, we are going to learn about the Americans with Disabilities Act, or as you might hear me refer to it as the ADA, and what comprises discrimination under the act, and with a focus on non-discrimination provisions under Title I of the ADA, which covers employers. As a preview of what this training will cover, we'll start by providing an overview of the ADA. Next, we'll talk about the definition of disability under the ADA. That will help clarify who's covered under the law. Then this will segue into a discussion of Title I of the ADA, which again covers employment discrimination. Throughout this presentation, I'll provide some illustrative examples and some practice pointers. So let's first start with a little bit of history and overview of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Prior to the passage of the ADA, the main federal law that provided protections to people with disabilities was the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. So the Rehabilitation Act prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in programs that are conducted by federal agencies, in programs that receive federal financial assistance, in federal employment, and in the employment practices of federal contractors. But because of this limited federal jurisdiction link and substantive reach, disability rights advocates and lawmakers pushed for more extensive for a more extensive law, which eventually culminated in the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act. The Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA, was signed into law on July 26, 1990. You can find the provisions of the law at 42 USC 12101 and the following provisions uh, that follow from that provision. Overall purpose of the ADA is to make American society more accessible to people with disabilities. The ADA's protections apply primarily, but not exclusively, to individuals who meet the definition of disability. In 2008, the ADA Amendments Act was passed by Congress. The purpose of the ADA Amendments Act was to broaden the definition of disability, which had been narrowed by a series of Supreme Court decisions that followed the passage of the ADA. You can find the Americans with Disabilities Act amendments at Public Law 110-325. Now, the ADA is divided into five titles, three of which we will focus on in this brief overview. We're going to talk about employment, which is Title I, government services briefly, which is Title II, and public accommodations, which is Title III. Now, while this presentation focuses on Title I, employment, I want to give you a broad overview generally of the ADA. So Title I requires covered employers to provide reasonable accommodations for applicants and employees with disabilities, and it prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in all aspects of employment. Title II covers all activities of state and local governments, and it provides that those public entities not discriminate against people with disabilities in the provision of a public entity service, services, programs, or activities. And Title III covers public accommodations. Now, public accommodations are private entities who own, lease, lease to, or operate facilities, such as restaurants, retail services, hotels, movie theaters, schools, convention centers, doctor's offices, homeless shelters, transportation depots, you name it. Public accommodations must comply with basic non-discrimination requirements that prohibit exclusion, segregation, and unequal treatment of disabled individuals.